Thank you so much for being with us today, Melissa Wells, or Mel Wells, as many people call you. We are so honored that you're talking with us today. Oh, thank you so much. It's truly my honor to be here. So thank you for the invite. Absolutely. And I just want to go through your bio for a second because you have so much going on. So you're a health coach. You're an eating psychology coach. You're an international speaker and best-selling author of The Goddess Revolution. You also dedicate your time to empowering women worldwide to ditch dieting for good and make peace with food and love their bodies. And you're also on a mission to support women to connect deeply to their bodies, souls, and their inherent feminine wisdom. Wow, welcome. Thank you. Well, it all started with IIN wow. nine years ago. So it's a real full circle moment for me to be here with you guys and on stage. It's it's truly such a beautiful full circle moment for me. Oh, I love that yeah. so much. So you are really passionate about building a community that empowers women to step into their full potential. Mm -hmm. What do you think is necessary uh, to be present for that to happen? Well, I always say community is the new currency. I really believe that like we can have all the money in the world, all of the things that we think are going to make us feel happy and successful. But if we don't have community, we'll always feel poor in life. We'll always feel like a lack of something. And so for me, when I started out on this journey of health coaching and learning to heal myself and learning to look within and learning to, you know, work with my body and all the different things that people learn in IIN, I felt pretty alone in that journey. Yeah. And it was through finding communities, finding people who were just like me, finding people who were on the same path, that I was able to go so much further and I was able to really believe in myself. Mm -hmm. And so I think a lot of people start out on this journey mm -hmm. And the people around them don't understand. Yeah. They did not necessarily very supportive because people are confused, people don't understand, so they don't really know how to support. Yeah. And so for me, I think building community, creating community is our answer in so many ways because then we can really get to allow ourselves to be seen, allow ourselves to feel that sense of belonging, to mm -hmm. feel accepted. And in that sense of safety that we find in the group, we can really allow ourselves to, to flourish and blossom. We can go so much further when we go together. Oh, I love that so much. Yeah. So it sounds like community has probably brought you through a lot. Um, I'd love to mm -hmm. know, if there were any other times in your career that you felt really stuck and outside of community, I mean, what? Had, how did you get through those times for people that are looking at you that are so successful? Can you tell us about a time perhaps? Yeah, totally. I think the times in my career that I have maybe struggled have been when I've tried to put myself into a box, like when I've tried mm. to pigeonhole myself into like, okay, I'm this one niche. And I kind of have like hit a couple of walls with that. Mm -hmm. You know, when I was first starting out as a health coach, I thought that I had to be this like perfect vegan health coach mm. who ate perfectly and who only ever ate kale salads and drank green smoothies. Mm. And I had I was trapping myself in this box of what I thought people wanted me to be. And as soon as I just decided, do you know what? That's actually not my truth, you know? Actually, some nights I wanna go out and eat pizza and some nights I wanna go out and drink wine and do you know what? That's okay, because that's yeah. that's who I am. Yeah. And as soon as I actually started sharing more of my story, which was, hey, actually, I haven't always lived my life as this perfect health coach. I haven't had these answers yeah. just here for me. In fact, you know, for the last seven years, I've really, my story is I had really struggled with eating disorders. And it, it took me a while to like actually reveal that mm. to my audience and my community because I felt like people would then put me in a different box. Mm. But what happened was as soon as I was vulnerable enough to share my truth, mm. my business just took off in a whole new way because people were like, oh, I relate, I'm no, I'm not alone, she gets it. Yeah. And um, really that was, that I would say is one of the, one of the keys to my success is to just share your truth and be really honest and stop thinking that you need to be mm -hmm. the perfect health coach or the perfect life coach because that's not real, that's yeah. not human. And people don't want that. They wanna work with a human being mm -hmm. who's been through challenges, who gets where they are, has come out the other side, but doesn't have it all figured out. Yeah. So 
yeah, that, that's what I would say. And then there was a couple of other times where, um, where I had to make a pivot again, okay. or I decided to make a pivot because I was like, do you know what? I think I'm, I think I'm done with this message now. I think mm -hmm. I've evolved beyond this message and I'm ready for something new. Mm -hmm. And just give, like allowing myself the freedom mm -hmm. to evolve beyond the niche that I'd created for yeah. myself was yeah. really helpful for me. Yeah. That's so inspiring um, to Thank hear you. that. And it sounds like, I mean, you share so much about IAN and your journey, and you love telling people about how IAN has changed your life. Can you tell mm -hmm. us a little bit about your experience with IAN and, and why you feel called to tell people about IAN? Yeah, totally. I mean, when I discovered IIN, I'd never even heard of health coaching. I really had no idea what that was. Mm -hmm. And it was my first glimpse into a world of uh, you know, a life of being of service to others and a life of really helping others to heal. And, you know, from the second that I enrolled, I just knew that my life was changing. Just every time I tuned into the lectures, every time I connected with students, I just felt like this is where I'm meant to be. This is the path that I'm meant to be on. Mm -hmm. And um, it really transformed my my life and the trajectory of it. So mm -hmm. I, I wouldn't have the career that I do now if it hadn't started with IIN. I always direct people in that yeah. in that way. And I always tell people, go, go check out IIN because mm -hmm. it, it really is the place mm -hmm. um, to begin, definitely. Catalyst, yeah. yeah. And so why do you think health coaches are needed today, you know, now more than ever. Why are health coaches important? What role do they play in the world today? I mean, gosh, where do I begin? Like, if you just go out into the world and just start talking to strangers, mm -hmm. you'll realize how important and needed health coaches are mm -hmm. because most people are not happy with their lives. Most people do not feel good in their bodies. Most people don't know how to connect mm -hmm. to their bodies or their souls. Mm -hmm. Most people do not um, feel energetically like they're thriving in their life or they've got something going on with a relationship or they're not happy in their jobs. You know, everyone will have a, a complaint, a stressor. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I think now more than ever, there's so much technology, there's so much distraction, there's so much um, it's so easy for people to not connect with themselves. It's so easy for people to be disconnected and distracted all the time. So yeah, if you can just help just one of those people, you know, then you're making a difference. There is an abundance of clients for everyone. All we need to do is literally walk out onto the street and, and look around, yeah. you know, and look at, see if people are smiling, see if people yeah. are happy or see if they are not, yeah. you know? And so there's, there's always a difference that we can make in people's mm -hmm. lives. And I'm just so happy to see this industry really taking off now and people really understanding how powerful it is. As an IAN grad who's created a massive positive ripple effect um, in the world, I'm sure a lot of our students and grads are looking at you like, I can't do that, or they're on the cusp of doing something that they're really scared of or pushing through. What advice do you have for those students or grads? Yeah, so the advice that I have for students and grads of IIN is to start before you're ready. Mm -hmm. Too many people think that they need to have like a certain amount of business training or the perfect website, or they need to spend all this money like learning about social media or have a ton of followers. Mm -hmm. No, we all start from nothing. We all start from zero. And it's best to just start before you're ready. Like there's no such thing as like, just suddenly feeling ready, suddenly having like everything together and then this moment just occurs where you're like, now I'm ready to go out into the world and be the health coach that I know I was meant to be. Mm -hmm. You have to do it like just, just now without the perfect website, without the perfect application form, without the perfect photo shoot. Like mm -hmm. people don't really care about that, yeah. honestly. Like yeah. that will come over mm -hmm. time. You've got so much time to build all of that. Mm -hmm. But right now just practice like, going out, using your voice, talking about what you do, mm -hmm. talking about why you're passionate about it, sharing your story, you know, just using your voice to share what your new path is and what you're offering is so important. So mm -hmm. yeah, that's my advice. Don't think you have to wait until you've got this perfect thing together. People just wanna hear from you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, that's so great. And so I wanna shift gears a little bit. Mm -hmm. 
I would love to hear about your morning and possibly evening routine. Do you have a routine? Mm -hmm. Do you have consistency with yeah, that? Yeah, yeah. My morning routines have, are always very flowy and mm. intuitive and they'll shift from season to season. Mm. So um, we just moved house from Miami to Austin and one of the first priorities of like getting into the new house was like, okay, what's the new morning routine going to be in <laughs> yeah. the new house? And I have a dog who has a lot of energy in the mornings. Mm. So she kind of demands that like <laughs> she's a big priority of the morning routine. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, totally. And I'm about to have a baby. So the morning routine will shift again. <laughs> but um, at the moment, what it looks like is uh, waking up, taking my prenatal vitamins, getting a coffee on, uh, walking the dog, taking the dog out for some exercise, giving her a big run. And that kind of gets, gets us out of the house me and my partner we go on a big walk together to the dog park we get to talk about what we have coming up that day and then we'll come back from the dog park and we'll meditate together um, and then we'll do like a 15 20 minute workout mm. um, at the moment I'm doing like prenatal pregnancy pilates mm. he does his own like fitness thing and then we'll have breakfast together I might do a little journaling I used to do tons of journaling mm -hmm. and um, lately I haven't been doing it so much. So it's kind of something that's like not really happening at the moment, mm -hmm. but I'm cool with that. So we'll have our breakfast and then, yeah, just start the day. It's pretty simple. Breakfast, I'll usually have um, eggs, um, some kind of um, gluten-free whole, like, um, like seeded toast, mm -hmm. some avocado. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and then just start my, start my working day. Love that. And do you yeah. have a wind down at the end of the day? Do you have a nighttime routine or? Again, it's kind of led by the dog. <laughs> so <laughs> we'll like decide at like a certain point, okay, we're going to close down the laptops yeah. and then we'll do the same thing. We'll like, we'll go on a big walk. Yeah. We'll kind of reflect on the day, mm -hmm. ground, talk about how our day was. And then that's the end of work, basically. Mm -hmm. We'll get the dog out experience like a sunset together. Mm. Um, we have a pool where we live, so we might go for like a little mm. swim together and um, and then come home, cook together. I like to listen to podcasts when I'm mm. cooking dinner. Um, so sometimes I do that. Sometimes I'll just put some music on mm. and um, yeah, we'll just relax, watch our favorite show and then head to bed. Yeah. Oh, it sounds like so many yeah. nourishing things throughout the day. Yeah, when, when I lived alone, I was... Um, meditating at night before I fell asleep mm -hmm. and I really liked that it would really help me get off to sleep mm -hmm. but now I'm living with my partner it's nice to just have like more intimacy together in the evenings mm -hmm. yeah. oh that's so nice yeah and so if you had to share one wellness tip you know that's been transformative in your life or mm -hmm. that's successful to others what would you sh what would you share oh so much Okay, one thing that's really transformed my entire life mm -hmm. is it's not about the food you eat. It's about your relationship to the food, mm -hmm. your relationship mm -hmm. with the food. Yeah. It's not about like um, one thing that you do. It's about how much you love yourself and what your relationship is with yourself. Mm -hmm. If you really practice being your own best friend, speaking kindly to yourself, then you will naturally want to do things for yourself out of love, right? So I think it can be, um, we can get into the wellness space and kind of continue to be our own worst critics. Sometimes mm -hmm. I'm not doing this good enough. I'm not eating enough of this food. I'm not taking enough of these vitamins. Or I shouldn't have eaten that. And mm -hmm. it's like, what are we doing this for? Yeah. You know, like, yeah. why are you beating yourself up? Like, we're trying to live a healthier lifestyle and like, we can't transform without love present, yeah. right? If we're doing it from a place of like just beating ourselves up and like never good enough, never good enough, you're just never going to get anywhere with that, yeah. with that attitude, right? So like the biggest wellness tip for me has been love yourself. Mm -hmm. Like come into a practice of harmonious relationship with yourself and everything else just starts to get way easier after that mm -hmm. because it's coming from the right place. What an amazing thing to end on. We can't transform without love present. I love that gives me chills. 
It's um, true. I tried. <laughs> It yeah, doesn't, I yeah, <laughs> I learned the hard way. <laughs> oh my yeah. gosh. Well, it's been an absolute pleasure, Mel. And um, on behalf of everyone at IAN, the whole IAN family, thank you so much for being with us. Mm, thank you. It's such an honor. Thank you so much. Looking forward to many more adventures with IAN. <laughs>